What's going on? Brian Tong here, and we've got even more iPhone 15 updates with the latest leaks. Plus, we got Apple's secret behind-the-scenes push for non-invasive blood glucose monitoring for the Apple Watch, which could actually be a game changer. All right, let's start with the iPhone 15 Pro. And we know 9 to 5 Mac released the first renders of what's expected to be the iPhone 15 Pro with thinner bezels, more rounded edges, USB-C, and a larger camera bump. Well, they now report Apple will include a new dark red color option as the exclusive feature color for the Pro lineup. Now we've seen Pacific Blue for the 12 Pro, Sierra Blue for the 13 Pro, and Deep Purple for the 14 Pro. Well, this new dark red would be based on the color hex 410D0D, and this image is just an idea of what it could look like, but it's not the final design. And you know, we just gotta keep stirring that iPhone 15 pot. Now, 9to5Mac also reports that the standard iPhone 15 and 15 Plus are being tested with two new color options by Apple, light blue and pink. Now, check these out. These two colors, they just take me back to the days of the iPhone 5C. The report says the information is still very early and could change, and we've seen that happen with previous iPhone color rumors before. But sticking with the standard iPhone 15, 3D CAD files obtained by 9to5Mac reveal that the entire 15 lineup, that's pros and standard models, will now all have the dynamic island. So hey, say goodbye to the notch. The iPhone 15 will also get USB-C like the iPhone 15 Pro, and the 15 will keep its dual camera setup, while the third camera and LiDAR system pretty much stays exclusive to the Pro models. Now the designs also reveal that the iPhone 15 will have a new display size of 6.2 inches and will be similar to the 14 Plus. It also appears that the rumored capacitive buttons will not be on the iPhone 15, but only available on the 15 Pro based on these initial designs from 9to5Max sources. But as usual, we could throw all this out, but we will wait and see the real thing in September. Now we've heard that battery life is expected to improve with the iPhone using the new three nanometer process for the A17 chip in these new iPhones this year, which will be more power efficient. The Economic Daily News reports that the new iPhone will also use a more power efficient OLED display driver chip, and that could also reduce power consumption and improve battery life. So maybe we squeak out another hour or two. Jeez, could we get even more? But that would be great. Now, according to research firm TrendForce, they claim the new iPhone 15 lineup as a whole will bump up the capacity and specification of the RAM inside this year's phones. The iPhone 15 Pro models will likely be equipped with eight gigs of RAM versus the six gigs in the 14 Pro. And then the standard iPhone 15 and 15 Plus will stay at six gigs of RAM, but could possibly be upgraded to faster LP DDR5 RAM, which is the same type of RAM that was used in the 14 Pros last year. So increased RAM obviously can bring on more multitasking on the iPhone and an overall performance boost alongside this new expected A17 chip. So those are all the latest iPhone 15 and 15 Pro reports and rumors right now. But let's talk about a new report from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman about the future of the Apple Watch. Apple has been working on a moonshot style project that goes all the way back to the Steve Jobs era, and this would be non-invasive and continuous blood glucose monitoring. This secret project is internally called E5 at Apple, according to Gurman, and the goal is to measure how much glucose is in somebody's body without needing to prick their skin for a blood sample. And this would be the holy grail, really a type of feature for the roughly one in 10 Americans that suffer from diabetes and the over 400 million who suffer from it worldwide. Now the report says after hitting a major milestone, Apple believes that it can bring their version of glucose monitoring to the market. And we already know how successful the Apple Watch is, but this could easily take things to another level. So Apple, they say they're still years away, and this isn't coming anytime soon for people who are using you know, some of those patches from Dexcom or Abbott right now, but Apple is using a chip technology called Silicon Photonics and a measurement process called Optical Absorption Spectroscopy. Yeah, try saying that 10 times fast. I'm not even gonna try. Now their system uses a laser to emit specific wavelengths of light below the skin where it measures interstitial fluid, and that's the substance that leaks out of capillaries and it can be absorbed by glucose. The light is then reflected back to the sensor that can indicate the concentration of glucose and an algorithm then determines a person's blood glucose level. Now there are hundreds of people who've been working on this project according to Gurman as part of Apple's Exploratory Design Group or XDG. It's one of Apple's most covert initiatives 
at their Cupertino headquarters, and Apple's been testing it on hundreds of people over the past decade, and the system is more than 12 years in the making, but is now considered to be at the proof of concept stage. Yeah, this is really exciting stuff, and Apple is working on developing a prototype device about the size of an iPhone that can be strapped to your bicep, but it obviously needs to be shrunken down to a more practical size. Well, think about this. An earlier version, according to the report, sat on top of a table. Now, one of Apple's goals for this tech is to create a preventative measure that warns that people are pre-diabetic and allow them to make lifestyle changes to avoid or prevent them from developing type 2 diabetes. They will also need to get government approval down the line. That's a huge part of this puzzle. But Apple isn't the only one that has tried to create a non-invasive system before. You know, others have failed. We even talked about uh, the Rockley Photonic Sensor maybe about a year or two ago that Apple had worked with. But Apple later ended their partnership and Rockley has recently filed for bankruptcy. So this is not easy stuff. Uh, this project started in 2010 when Apple purchased a startup named Rare Light who had an early approach to non-invasive blood glucose monitoring. And the report says the deal happened because of Steve Jobs' vision of healthcare combined with technology. And we know that Jobs was dealing with his own health problems at that time. Now, this is a fascinating report. You should go check it out with incredible work by German and the team. And if Apple can pull this off down the road, it would absolutely help revolutionize health tracking and healthcare and then elevate Apple. Apple as a company, Apple with its connection to healthcare, and the Apple Watch, like I said, to a whole nother level. Uh, this could be really incredible, but we're still years away. All right. Let's have some fun now here with our last story. Did you have the foresight to buy the very first iPhone and keep it sealed in its box? Because a first gen iPhone brand new sealed in box recently sold for a record breaking $63,000 earlier this month. Now I still have my used one that works perfectly fine, but uh, I would never sell that thing. Now our auction has a collection of items as part of the Steve Jobs and the Apple computer revolution auction set and also an 8 gig original iPhone is part of this auction as well. Now, it's estimated to sell for over 20,000, but after the recent sale of one for 63,000, come on, it's got to go higher than that. It's got to. So, feel free to uh, bid if you'd like. And then to wrap things up, you know, it's worth mentioning that Steve Jobs' birthday is on February 24th, and geez, life would absolutely be completely different without the impact that he made. You know, my joy and love for technology and yours might be a lot different without him and my videos, right? My show, my coverage, all the things I do, uh, they would absolutely not really be here. So thank you so much for all your contributions, SJ. I mean, it is really, really incredible. All right, now that's gonna do it for this week's video. If you like what you see, hey, give me that thumbs up, subs up, then hit that notification bell to get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Peace and love.